Dear colleagues, welcome to my hospital at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a cataract with genular dehiscence from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. I have taken up this case for surgery. There is a history of trauma, history of blunt trauma. And you can see in this view, there is a red glow from periphery from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And I know that I am going to have a tough time in this case. So the main incision and on side port has been made. Now see what happens during capsular access. As I try to incise the capsule, there is wrinkling of this capsule. This indicates that there is genular weakness or genular dehiscence. And now I know that I have to I'm not getting a good view and I have to use type and blue dye to do the rexus. Here I cannot see the capsule attack properly. So I asked for trap and blue dye and in this case what we do is we just paint the anterior capsule and inject the dye just touching the capsule. Touch the capsule and inject the dye. In this way you paint the capsule with trap and blue dye underneath viscoelastic substance. Staining is not as good as it can occur under an air bubble, but this gives some amount of staining and it helps. Now I inject viscoelastic substance and now I am going to try to do capsular axis again. Viscoelastic substance is injected and now the uterata forceps is taken. Now I can see the tag. So fix the eyeball first. Hold the tag but doesn't come. So I have to hold it very close to its attachment and now very gently and very slowly I'm guiding it to do a continuous carbilinear capsular axis. Continuous carbilinear capsular axis is very important because I want to apply a capsular tension ring that is a CTR in this case and here is it. The capsular tension ring is introduced and now it doesn't tend to go into the capsular bag. So what I do is I introduce the Sinski over it and the Sinski go underneath the anterior capsular rim. Now this CTR has no other way. It has to go into the capsular bag. Here it is. The CT, the Sinski hook is underneath the anterior capsular rim and the CTR is being pushed into the capsular bag. And now, I hold very close to the eyelet of the trailing end of this CTR with a Macpherson's forceps and introduce a Sinski hook through the side port and then guide 
this CTR into the capsular bag. And now the CTR has been placed without hydrodissection. So I'm going to do hydrodissection now. Here it is. The hydrodissection is being done. Here the fluid wave came to the opposite side. The nucleus is tapped and an attempt is done to rotate the nucleus. But rotating a nucleus in a case with genular dehiscence is not easy. So what I am doing is, I am injecting viscoelastic substance and making one more paracentesis on the right side. Till now there was only one paracentesis on the left side of the main incision. Now I am going to introduce two instruments, two Sinsky hooks or in this case it is chopper in right hand and Sinsky hook in left hand and by manually I can rotate the nucleus. This is very important because there is CTR in the bag and unless I rotate it beforehand I may have very difficult situation during nucleus management. And now is the time to manage the nucleus. The tip of the FECO handpiece is introduced. Some superficial cortical matter is removed. And now I make the bevel up and then bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus. And now the nucleus is chopped and since the nucleus has been rotated beforehand it is becoming easy to manage this nucleus. This nuclear piece is free. It is subdivided into two smaller pieces and then it is emulsified and removed. And now I make another chop, emulsify and remove. Now I rotate it here, make one more chop at this point. FICO power being used is 60% flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and now this is the last nuclear fragment and this is the epinucleus the epinucleus is also coming out very nicely and I'm very much cautious. I'm keeping an eye on the stability of the anterior chamber and I'm removing the nuclear piece, epinucleus and nucleus. And now before I come out, I want to inject viscoelastic substance and as soon as I inject I stop irrigation and keep injecting from the anterior chamber and then come out otherwise what can happen is the whole bag 
will come forward and even vitreous may prolapse through the dehiscent area of the journal. Now, aspiration of cortical matter is not easy in such cases. When the CTR is there and the CTR has been placed before hydrodissection, it is not easy to remove this cortex. So you have to be very cautious and the pool should not be towards the center. It should be tangential first and once I am sure that I am not pulling the bag and then I remove the cortex. And some cortex actually hooks the CTR and it becomes very difficult to remove those. So there should be a tangential pool first and then it is pulled towards the center. This is a long case. So in this video I am going to conclude after cortical aspiration. This will be followed by another video in which I will show implantation of the intraocular lens and how I managed further complications. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills.